guys, my name is Ashley and I work with Walking Mountains and I'm here today to talk to you about the water cycle. Water is all around us and we can't live without it. We need water for drinking, for washing our hands, for cleaning. Water is a really important resource. So think for a second about why water is important to you. Personally, I love water because in the summertime, I like to go recreating and swimming in the river. So what is a water cycle anyways? A cycle is something that repeats over and over again, just like the seasons. Well, the water cycle also has a certain pattern, but it doesn't have a specific beginning or a specific end. The water cycle never stops and it keeps going forever. So that means that the water that you drink today might be the same water that dinosaurs drank millions of years ago. And today we're gonna learn more about the water cycle together by making a diagram of the water cycle. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's start our water cycle diagram with the Eagle River. Since it's so important to us here in Eagle County where we get our drinking water from. Today I'm going to use chalk and just a sidewalk to diagram the water cycle. You can also use chalk and a sidewalk in your own backyard or you can use crayons or markers and draw the water cycle and teach your family or hang it on the fridge. So our first step of the water cycle we decided is going to be the river. Water is in the form of liquid on the surface of the planet in many places like this river in our diagram or maybe in a lake or a pond or even in the ocean. What do you think could be a next step for these water droplets to go? I'll give you a clue. The sun is your hint. Have you guessed where these water droplets might go? If you guessed evaporation, that is one place these water droplets can go. Evaporation is the process of the liquid water on Earth changing into a gas or a water vapor because of the heat of the sun and rising up into the atmosphere. So that could be the next step in the cycle of our water droplet. If you've ever climbed to the top of a mountain before, maybe you notice that it gets cooler and cooler the higher you go. It's the same thing that happens to the water droplets in the sky. The higher they rise into the sky, the more they cool down and they actually change back into a liquid state or even ice and form clouds. And that step is called condensation. So evaporation is when the water molecules move into the sky and condensation is when they cool down and condense back into a liquid cloud. When the water droplets in the cloud become too heavy or they get too big, we get another step of the water cycle. Yes, precipitation. Precipitation is when water falls back down to the earth as rain, or maybe a snowflake, or maybe even as hail. As water falls back to the earth as precipitation, some of it is absorbed by the ground, like my water right here, but if it's not absorbed by the ground, some of it runs off and back into the river. And the water cycle doesn't have to follow any special order, and it can go out of order. So every water droplet is on its own special journey in the water cycle. I know a great song and dance to help us learn the water cycle. Will you join me? Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. The water cycle boogie goes round and round. The water cycle boogie goes up and down. Thank you for learning about the water cycle with me today. I hope that you made your own diagram and that you can hang it up somewhere to help you remember the water cycle.